If the Nazi Germany concentration camps were the symbol of the Holocaust, then Dachau would be the symbol of those concentration camps. Established in an empty World War I munitions factory on March 10, 1933, Dachau was the first concentration camp established by the Nazis. Twelve days later, on March 22nd, that concentration camp would be filled for the very first time, beginning a series of horrors that would last for over a decade. The first groups of people brought to Dachau were mainly members of other political parties, such as communists and social democrats, who were brought there for the sake of detention guarded by the Bavarian state police. The state police didn't have control for long though, as on April 11th, the Nazi German paramilitary group, the SS, took control over the camp, with Theodore Eich being appointed organizer of the camp. It was clear that Eich would be incredibly influential over the concentration camp system, establishing detailed regulations for those living in the camps. These regulations allowed the camp to be used for an additional purpose of training SS soldiers, where soldiers would be desensitized and molded into seeing those with different ideologies as less than human. This system became so effective that once Ike was promoted to general inspector of all concentration camps, he implemented the Dachau system as the basis for all camps in Nazi Germany. Over time, the demographic of the prisoners in Dachau became more diverse, including homosexuals, Jehovah's Witnesses, and of course, Jews. Those in the camp were treated incredibly harshly, but the Jews faced exceptionally harsh treatment, often finding no compassion from the SS or even other prisoners in the camp. While most Jews who arrived were able to leave if they could prove their intent to leave Germany, Dachau still consisted of a Jewish population estimated to be over 20%. A large portion of what Dachau was notorious for was its horrific medical experience. Some of these experiments involved testing prisoners in freezing water to see how warm-blooded mammals react, and exposing them to malaria and using mainly unknown and untested drugs to try and cheat them. This, however, was not even close to the limit of the human experiments performed in Dachau. Prisoners would be put in air pressure chambers to see the limits they could take before imploding or exploding. Salt water was given to them to drink to see how long they could bear drinking it, and after the death of a prisoner, it was common practice to remove the skin so that it could be later used in the same way one would use the leather of a cow. Eventually, these experiments would come to an end. In April of 1945, American troops traveled across Europe, liberating every concentration camp. While it was a happy moment, many still ended up dying during the liberation efforts. When the prisoners ran to the fences, they were electrocuted and when the starved prisoners got their hands on food, their bodies couldn't handle it. What the soldiers also found there was a large amount of bodies that had been casualties of the many train rides to the camp. Those that survived even the liberation process still had to survive the emotional trauma they faced. This significant post-Holocaust trauma was coined concentration camp syndrome, where victims would face anxiety so bad, their body would shake violently in its tremors making connections to other people for many sufferers became nearly impossible, leading to people having troubles trusting even their own family. Overall, Dachau is a place that truly reflected the more horrific side of World War II. It reveals how truly inhumane people can be to those who have been dehumanized and degraded into something that was seen as lesser. 200,000 people passed through the camp and many of them who were Jewish were sent off to die in other camps. Through start to finish, Dachau represents one of the darkest times in human history, 